Welcome back to another episode of What Are You Made Of? with your boy, the unstoppable Mike C-Rock. You can be unstoppable too. Just get my book, Rocket Fuel, Convert Setbacks, Become Unstoppable. Coming out here in March, you can get it at MikeCrock.com forward slash book. MikeCrock.com forward slash book. You'll see that Grant Cardone wrote the forward for the book to talk about the Rocket Fuel concept and what it's meant to him and his business and his life. And if you're following Grant, you know what he's up to. He's always going up. He's always elevating, just like me your boy C-Rock. So uh, thanks for listening, guys. Appreciate you coming back. Thank you for the support of the movement and the podcast. Uh, today, I think this might be our first Major League Baseball player, the former Major League Baseball player, definitely our first All-Star. Uh, I'm hoping I'm not wrong with that because I don't want to piss anybody off, but Shea Hillenbrand's our guest today. Uh, he's a former two-time MLB All-Star. He's uh, in with EXP Realty. He's in the real estate investing and if I remember correctly, dude, I think that you said on another call, maybe it was a clubhouse where you're into a zoo thing or something. Was that you? Yeah, I used to own a zoo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, thought that's <laughs> what, I was like, I, I thought I remembered that, but there's so, so much going on. And uh, you also have an apparel company, lifestyle apparel company. It's called Two V's Lifestyle Apparel. And uh, you're selling hats, T-shirts, hoodies, belts. It's part of the movement to inspire people to use a voice to impact the world. So welcome to the show, Shay. Thank you so much. I appreciate you having me. Excited for this. Yeah, look, so uh, yeah, I've been, uh, the funny thing is I started this podcast a while back and I said, you know what, I'm going to just, I'm going for people, you know, I'll take anybody that comes on and wants to share their story, but I'm also going to ask Major League Baseball, sports players, NBA, whatever, and also real successful business people right from the start. I wasn't like, why, why just waste time? And uh, all of a sudden people started wanting to come on the show and I just, started in my dining room, as I was telling you earlier, I'm like, this is crazy. The people are saying yes. So it's going on and on and on. And I'm just, I'm thankful for the opportunity to have met you on clubhouse, but also for you coming on the show today to share what you're made of. So we always start the show, same thing. So tradition, what are you made of Shay? That's a great question. Never been asked that either. So, uh, uh, you know, thinking about that as you ask that, it's, it's tenacity, it's voraciousness, it's, it's uh, doing everything against all odds. And that's my nonprofit foundation is to inspire kids that go against all odds. I was that guy that had average talent. Uh, I think the blue collar worker playing in Boston as a Red Sox player, blue collar town, uh, became a fan favorite there because I worked my ass off. I did everything that everybody else wouldn't do uh, on the days to give myself a position and have a chance to have success. So, uh, that, that's kind of like the surface level, but me, super passionate guy, super, I, I love pouring into people. Uh, I'm competitive. I love being able to try to find, to fill my competitive niche is finding uh, things in people that they can't see to help them achieve their goals and their dreams and their vision. And family guy, I'm married to my soulmate. I have five beautiful children, three adopted and three, two, st or two wow. stepdaughters wow. and uh, super passionate. Love it. I love it, man. So growing up, did you play travel ball and all that growing up? Uh, I didn't have that when I was a kid. We had okay, travel sure. soccer. Yeah, okay, we had yeah. travel soccer, but uh, I was actually the number one soccer player in the state of Arizona out of high school. So I had a chance to play soccer professionally and uh, in Europe and uh, at universities. But my childhood dream was to play major league baseball growing up in LA, a diehard Dodger fan. So what did you have? Just little league baseball? That's basically what you had. And then growing up in the little league, league, then we had Bay pony Rouge. league and then you had, yeah, pony league, pinnacle pony league. And then you had junior high and then high school. That's it. Well, how old are you? I'm 45. Okay. You're a year older than me. So yeah, you know what, when I was in high school, we just started having uh, like a County team and then a travel team, just, just barely right after me. So my brother, uh, he's 11 years younger than me. He played D one Youngstown state. He was a catcher and he played travel ball. Like it was crazy. It ran our life, man. It's crazy. Nowadays, if you get into it now, it's like it, it, the whole family has to go around it. So it's like, uh, yeah. but I loved it, man. I love baseball. I, I was a, more of a football player. I played baseball those years, but I uh, played D3 football. Um, but man, just being around like all summer, I just, I just, I, I have I love for it. And a real quick story, my, my stepfather who stepped in for me as a dad when I was 11, he grew up a baseball fanatic. Like he would go to the game. He was a type that fill out the score car <laughs> or whatever when we were at yeah. the game yeah yeah you know, the phillies games and stuff and i'm like come on man it's, you're really gonna fill this out while we're sitting here <laughs> and uh but it was cool though because he passed away two years ago and you know just a, the die hard baseball like true natural baseball fan uh that he was um really really had a big impact on me in life so 
but I, I watched as uh, your as your career went, and um, I'm I'm a Phillies fan most of the time, and 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 Yankees oh fan besides that. So, uh, <laughs> I, no, but I, I always watched good good players that hustled and and grinded, and and you know you were one of those. So, uh, first of all, I want to let, let you know I was a big fan. But um, I appreciate that. So when you were playing baseball, how did you know when you were done? Like, did you get to go out on your own terms or did they just say, you know what, this is, how did that work? That's a good question. I appreciate you asking that because so many people uh, from the outside really don't know how the dynamics work on the inside, uh, especially as a player and a player that's deemed to have a little bit of success. Um, you quickly lose who you are through the process. And this, this translates to entrepreneurs, CEOs, business people that have success. If you don't know who you are before you go into what you do, you quickly attach because the pressure to succeed is so great that you lose yourself. You quickly attach your identity to what you do. So um, my out was baseball. I was always throwing the ball against the wall when I was a kid. Uh, I never wanted to be inside my house. I had OCD, ADHD, all that crap to try to take away from kids. I had that growing up. I couldn't sit still. Uh, but, you know, playing baseball after I was drafted by the Red Sox, I quickly realized the pressure, I'm telling you, is crazy. Like when you become 1% of the 1% of the world, it becomes a totally different realm of operation. And if you're not equipped for that, it's, it, it'll overtake you. And, and for myself, um, I left in the prime of my career. I left $50 million on the table. Um, I was sitting on my couch uh, in the off season after my seventh year, two-time all-star, highlight after highlight, perfect game I've been in, no hitters, net jet knit, like rock, and, like rock star status. I was holding my son in my arms on my couch and I was trying to have a father-son moment, my first adopted child. I waited so long. I always wanted to be a dad and I was holding him there and I was like, man, he's going to have a bright future, like such a beautiful little boy. And I was trying to connect with my love for him, like to show him because, you know, he's 18 months. You really can't do anything but just show it and feel it. And all I can connect to is that pain. So when you don't know who you are, when you go into what you do and you attach your identity to what you do, like I picked the wrong sport because there's so much failure in baseball and I lived and died every single night on that field because that was my identity. And this is like 87% of major league baseball players go through this. And so many people don't see it because after you ride off in the sunset, it's like, okay, next. So like with my son in my arms, I became numb to everything and everybody around me. I couldn't handle it. I, I just couldn't focus. I couldn't do anything. And not talking to anybody, not talking to my wife at the time, my parents, my agent, anybody, no friends. I quit. I walked away. Like I walked away from my one childhood dream I worked my whole life for. The one thing where I never gave up on, the one thing that I per persevered and achieved in the prime of my career, I walked away because I hurt so bad. That pain inside myself became so great that I didn't even know I was this a walking zombie. I couldn't even function. Well, I could perform in the field, but when I got off the field, I had no life. I had nothing. I couldn't even be there. I was always there for my kids, but I was never present because I was yeah. just gone because I didn't know who I was. So that time, at that point in time in my career or my life, I was 32 years old with a gazillion dollars in the bank. I decided to come home to be a father to my kids and pursue my second dream of owning a zoo. So that's when I purchased a, a, a 38 acre horse farm. I accumulated 300 farm and exotic animals and I'd pair those up with children in the community. Well, so child that, crisis, kids, all that stuff. So it was your crazy. nickname Shay Exotic, is that right? <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm no, just no. kidding with you. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny because uh, I'm very, I'm very, I've <laughs> never heard that before, but I, I get it. Uh, I know that side of it. I know, yeah. I know people that do that. Uh, I, I've rescued tigers and let, I've been in that side. I was like Steve Irwin, the crocodile hunter, man. I yeah, love animals awesome. so much more than baseball, yeah. but uh, that was just to cover the void. That was just to fill myself up. That was just yeah. to distract myself because I didn't know who I was and I couldn't sit still long enough with myself to address the root core of what was going on with me. I didn't even know who I was. So I had a challenge. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I I had a mortgage division a while back, and it fell apart. This is the sec that this is the first one I did, and when it when it fell apart, it was in a dark time for me. It's not the same thing as the level of baseball, but dark time for me because I identified as this division manager of this big division, right? When it fell apart, I'm like, I, I'm not doing that ever again. Like, I'll I'll run a mortgage division, which I did. We built it back in two years. What took us seven the first time, but I'm starting something. I'm starting a movement that I can live my life on, and nobody can take from me. And I'm going to do what I want to purpose on it. And if, if it, you know, the mortgage thing doesn't understand tough shit, I'm going to make this happen. So that's, I, I feel you when you said that, but was there any fun with it at all? Like, did you have fun too, or? 
I always tell everybody, you know, <laughs> the first and the 15th, because that's when you get paid, brother. Like, I made so much money, like, just opening up that paycheck, that's the only thing that you could do to kind of, you know, as, as you're successful, as you know, with the people you've been around and, yeah. and yourself, it's like, if you don't know who you are, like, it's just like, you just mask yourself. You mask all that pain. You mask it with the surface level. And that's how I lived. Whenever I walked into a room, I always wanted to be noticed. I always wanted my ego stroke. And I always wanted people's positive affirmations to fill myself up. But I had to go through a full transformation. I was one breath away from losing my life eight years ago. Eight years ago, I overdosed on drugs and alcohol. And I was living in a van not down by the river in <laughs> no. front of my ex-wife's house. Oh, and, and through that process, I, I, I graciously made it through it. And, and it took me to get to that point to strip all the layers of the onion away to be able to see who I truly was. And it was a hard road, but I found it. And when and you it, find that, who that you truly are- baseball, doing, was it? No, that was after. after that was after yeah, the farm. After, after, that was after, after everything. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. Okay. Damn, dude. And so, so from that point, like what happened after you did that, when you, when you, when you overdosed? Like what happened in that week, two months after that? Like what, how did you get back on track? I woke up and I asked where I'd find my horse. My first purchase in the major leagues was a horse. A lot of people buy their mama a house. A lot of people buy themselves a house or a pimping car. When you get on top, I bought a horse. I always wanted a horse. Like I said, I was an animal lover. So long story short, this was four years after, like I got divorced before I lost my farm. I lost everything in my life. Everything, all the millions I played, I made playing baseball, everything because I didn't know who I was. And my identity was attached to being a professional athlete, a celebrity. This is so common. It's a joke. Like the statistics is crazily high. So uh, the next day when I woke up in the van, the sun peered through the front windshield of my van and I came to, I, uh, I was like, man, I don't have any side effects. I didn't have any nausea, headache, and the concoction of pills and alcohol I took the night before. I should have either been dead or in the hospital because I have, you talk about rocket fuel, man rocket fuel to the extreme. Everything I did was rocking it. Yeah. So when I came, it was like an aha moment. I was like, wow, this is crazy because it just like woke me up. My first thought was, where's my horse? This is four years after I lost my farm and my animals and everything. Never thought about that horse. Long story, I went on this reconnaissance mission uh, to be able to find my horse because I was going off of a good feeling, right? A thought creates an emotion, whether it's good or bad. That emotion dictates whether you take action or not take action, reconfirming limited beliefs or BS going through your mind or pushing through that. So I just wanted to feel something. When I thought about this horse that I lost four years ago, my first purchase in the major leagues, it gave me a good feeling. So I asked my friend to help me find it and he tracked it down. Long story short, at that point in my life when I had nothing, I prayed for God to bring a woman into my life to help me out through the process because if you said, hey, dude, let's sit down. I could teach you all the secrets. I could teach you all the rock. Whatever it is that you and Grant do, whatever, I wouldn't listen to you because my mind is a professional. Like I was 1% of the 1%. Like it's crazy the mindset you get if you don't know who you are, it becomes very toxic. I couldn't listen to anybody. But I know that if I had God bring a woman into my life to help me out, to connect with me, to hold me accountable, to believe in me, that, that, that standing up, that I'm, I'm knocked down, that, that I didn't want somebody to come down and, and put their arm around me and console me. I needed somebody to kick me in the ass and bring yeah. me up. So long story short, that person that had my horse that I looked for is my wife today. Get the hell out of here. Five years we've been serious? married. It's insane, man. And it, it took me, what? it took everything. And I prayed and I prayed and I prayed and like, like, we're, 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 like I'm shooting a documentary right now. We're putting it together to share my life. It's, cra it's crazy oh, insane. Man. So with me and what I want to share with, uh, with your audience, I think with my experience, it took someone else to help me through the process, to yeah. create a new identity, to help me go to those places inside myself that I needed to go at the core level of who I was to figure out what I need to do. So when I did that, I found who I was. I discovered gifts and talents I knew I never had. I mean, I swung a baseball bat a million times, man. I could do that in my sleep. Like hit a major league fastball, that rocket. But I didn't even know how to use my voice. I didn't even know mm -hmm. how to communicate, nothing. So this is the last thing I thought I'd ever be doing. So once you find that inner peace, once you find that identity of who you truly are, not who you think you are, but at yep. the core, bro, when I walk into a room now, I don't have any competition. That competition turns from competition to collaboration. I know who I am. I know what I'm supposed to be doing. And I know there's some, a certain amount of people that are supposed to hear my voice and my movement. And that's what I'm focused on. And if I do that, I can add value to other people like yourself and other power players and say, hey, is there any way we can maybe collaborate if we share the same vision? There's a big difference there, man, because before yep. when I played on top of the world, 
I had no self-confidence. I was always looking for other people's approval. I was always, I mean, I was treated like a God. I'd have little girls saying, will you marry me yeah, in the stands? Yeah. You know, autograph signings, $10,000. Like just think about it. Were, were you a, a, a Baltimore Orioles fan at all? Or no, 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 Philly, Philly. So I, I, went to, okay. no, I went to Orioles games and all that, but I, I was uh, Phillies. Yeah, so yeah. it's just- uh, but, but you were, you played in Fenway Park though, dude. That's like a dream of kids, right? Yeah, and then like, I mean, not, none of it was fun at all? That like, did, like never really like enjoyed any This moment. is what it is. And I, and I think this is what's relatable to entrepreneurs, to uh, the, 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 your audience, or whatever they're doing. If you're trying, to, if you're trying to rock it, you have to love what you're doing. In order to love what you do, you have to be able to love yourself. You're in charge yeah. of filling yourself up and keeping yourself full. That's yeah. not working on your craft. That's working on, okay, how does my mind work? What's the psychology of this? What's my makeup? What's my belief system? How do I function? How do I operate? I didn't do any of that stuff. Because I was trained that if you hit a baseball, go out there and perform, you're going to have a job, you're going to make millions. But what drove me to the top was a story. I was never good enough for my dad. I was never, I always wanted his approval and my dad never loved me. That's a story that I created in my mind, which drove me to the top. So I didn't know who I was. So you have to love what you do. Like baseball takes for me, man. It's like a marriage. Yeah. You got to yeah. have reciprocity. You yeah. got to love the game because the game will beat you up. The game of entrepreneurship, the game of real estate, it will beat you up. And if you don't have love, if you don't fill yourself up because the game's going to take from you, right? You, you begin to not like yourself. You don't like yourself. You don't like the game. You have an animosity towards what you resentment, do because you're yeah. empty, right? Yeah, it's yeah. resentment. And now, in the, and then you end up, uh, my identity is a game. So now I hate myself. So I'm flying wow. in private jets going to the all-star wow. game of 2005. A Citation 10 jet to the All-Star game, 2005, my childhood dream. Always in the backyard, bottom of ninth, bases loaded. I mean, I was doing it. And didn't Citation. enjoy it. Holy and shit. And I was in this jet, flying to my childhood dream to play in front of millions of people the next day. And the thoughts going through my mind as I looked out the window is, I fucking hate myself. Wow. I hate everything dude. about this. Wow. Pardon my French. But no, it's just like, gonna, I... it's just, uh, it, it, it's insane. So what drives me now, bro? Like, what am I made of? What am I made of? Like, I have an obsession for people not to feel that pain that I felt because I made it through the other side. I was one breath away from losing my life. That's what it is. It's just, I didn't just lose my money. I didn't just lose my, my family, whatever it is. I was lost my life because I didn't know who I was. So that's what drives me. And that's what I'm made of. Wow, dude. That's phenomenal. Holy <laughs> cow. I, you know, watching it back in the day, would have never, you know, we don't think about that kind of stuff. We just, Everybody that didn't make it is always thinking, God, man, lucky sons of bitches. I would love to be on that, man. You know what I mean? And, and uh, holy shit, that's just crazy. Well, I'm glad you made it, brother. Because you wouldn't be here right now if you didn't. And, and I'm honored. <laughs> and with the kids and everything, man, and, and the impact that you're going to have on this world that you're already having. Um, so let's, let's get into the real estate side of things. We talked about offline a little bit about real estate agents. And, you know, one thing I find, and, and it's the same thing for baseball players like you're talking about, if, if people have a bad view of help and that help is a bad thing and that they can't be helped or it's, it's weak to ask for help, it makes you less valuable to ask for help when actually it's the exact opposite. Mm -hmm. That's the thing I see in all of the training I do with real estate agents, mortgage people. If they don't get the help thing, I ain't getting through to them. Do you, do you experience that too? Or have you seen 100%, that? 100%. I mean, the, the, the statistics are staggering. I mean, and that's what's funny when I got into real estate, people were like, don't you know how many real estate agents are in Arizona? Like 26,000 or whatever. I'm like, do you realize that I was a major league baseball player and an all-star at that? Like just to get the, and it's not about a success or talent. It's about mindset. It's about mm -hmm. heart set, but you can't ask for help if you don't know who you are. I'm telling you, brother, vulnerability and transparency is the new currency of the 20, 2021. That's where it's at. If you can be vulnerable and transparent, like that's where it's at. But if your belief system is wrapped up and with limited beliefs and, and you really don't think you're good, you don't want to expose that because that's a sign of weakness. Yeah. And, I, and I'm a mega agent or I'm, I mean, I got a guy in my neighborhood right now who's rocking it, driving a Lambo, all that stuff. And I see him like this dude's going to self-destruct because he was Shea Hillenbrand when, you know, yeah. I was playing major, and I can't help him because right. he's like, he's like, I'm on top of the world, this and that. So um, it is one of those things to where like you have to be a student. So I don't know if it's, maybe asking for help. Yeah, I ask for help all the time now, but it's like, okay, I need to see where I'm at and I gotta learn. I have to go out there and learn. Yeah. I have to learn and learn and learn, read and learn and get experience and learn and master that craft. But what does that stuff do? That helps you, right? So 100%. that's the thought. So then once, see, the other thing is, is that it's taking responsibility, right? When you take responsibility for your life and understanding who you are 
and understanding that, uh, you know, you're the one that's in control. Like where you are right now is because of things you decided to do, actions you decided to take, thoughts that you had or actions you didn't take. That gives you the control and then, and, and that's taking responsibility. But in the future, you have control where you're going to go based on these same things as well. So it's help, it's control, understanding control is a good thing and also communication. So how can we help these agents? We got to communicate something to them, right? Because like if they're, if they're like, most agents don't make money. Most agents, I'll, I'll do a training and they won't show up. So what do we got to get it? Like, to me, it's like, I got to start talking more about help and how it helps a good thing to them so that they can feel like they can let their guards down. But like, have you had any like uh, situations as well where you see agents, like they just think they know everything and they don't. Yeah, they don't... I deal with, I mean, with the, I've been around a ton of people, you know, with, with, with what I've done, but when you're talking and, it all comes back to the story that we're telling ourselves. Yeah. And I always say that, what's the story that you're telling yourself? And so many people won't, like you said, get vulnerable enough to take it a level deeper and say, okay, what do I really do? Why are people getting into real estate? A lot of people that get into real estate space that I see are doing it because they see the allure of, man, I could just take 90 hours of courses, pay $1,000, have a GED and have a clean record, and I can make $100,000 in the first year and I can have all my problems solved. But the reason why they started in a set is because they have problems from within inside themselves. So yeah, I think yeah. it's a mindset. I think it's an identity set. I think it's a heart set. So that's kind of like what I bring to the game is like, y'all could talk about, not you, but the rest of you could talk about lead gen. You could talk about marketing. You talk about branding. Like they talk about branding all the time. How do I brand myself uniquely yeah. in this industry to set myself apart? How do I do a listing presentation against eight other agents, right? You have to know who you are. You have to shift the atmosphere when you walk into that room. You can't do that with training. You can't do that with mm -hmm. selling. They have to be able to feel you because the clients don't know, the consumer doesn't know what decisions to make and it's an emotional decision. So they need to be felt, they need to feel being impelled, you know, led to that decision. Yep. Not told, it'll actually, they gotta feel it. So it all starts with that identity thing. It all yeah. starts with, okay, why are you doing what you're doing? I play yeah. major league baseball to fill a void. And most real estate agents are in the space to, to fill a void because they, they're lost, but the game's going to kick you in the butt. Like, yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you know, on clubhouse, I noticed this a lot of times there's all these rooms and these thousand people in there and they're talking about strategies and techniques. And I always chime in with that same thing. I'm like, guys, none of that shit's going to work until they, th they get the foundation, right. Which is, which is purpose, 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 because that gives you your filter of which way to act every day, which way to say what to say every day. And none of that, and that's where, like you're, you're saying, that's the root cause of it. And there's not enough people like us on there. It's all the people that think they know everything regarding strategy and techniques. Bring and me in your room, bro. Bring me in your room. Yeah, I'll yeah, tag yeah. team with you. Yeah, yeah we'll, do, we'll do that. <laughs> we'll, we'll come in there and show them what's up. So, uh, so what's, what's next for you, man? So you, you're in the XP right now, but, but you're more investing in real estate? Yeah, so I'm on the investment side. I'm in EXP because uh, I have a passion. Like you said, I think we share the same... Uh, same passion of being able to help other realtors. Real estate's not my gig. Real estate is just what I do. My gig is pouring into people. My gig, gig is, is help people shift that identity, shift that belief system, break through those limited beliefs. All this stuff that I went through while I was on top of the world, why I lost everything and finding fulfillment, peace and purpose, everything right now. So I'm in the process of building out a, a system on a digital system that incorporates a fitness mindset and heart set to be able to help people transition and break through what they're going through. So super excited about that. Uh, I know a little bit about the fitness space and then uh, uh, like functional fitness stuff to help, yeah. the, uh, help people, you know, cause it, to get somebody's mind going or, or you got to get them moving. Like, yeah. like that, that's the quickest way to work in the mind is get moving. People forget about that. And we forget as real estate agents, right? Like, like mm -hmm. nonstop, I can work a hundred hours a week, just, just running real estate. Yep. And if I don't take care of myself, if I don't do what I need to do to get myself on track, you can't, you can't, you can't scale. You can't do any of that stuff. You can't yeah. tap into a higher version of yourself. Yeah. I talk about that all the time. I mean, that's how I got these big guns. I go to the gym. I, I care about this. I try to destroy the gym when I go, but it's, it's not about looks like that's just a byproduct of it. It's more about the preparing yourself for battle. That's the way I look at it. I got to prepare energy, myself. Right. And energy. Yeah, hell yeah, dude. People you need energy to, me, to do anything. <laughs> dude, they, they say to me, say to me all the time. Like, where do you get all your energy? Dude, I, I manufacture it. Like it's, 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 it's planned. It's intentionality. And so what, what, uh, what system are you using for your courses? Are you using you a system like for your digital courses? Are you, are you putting it into a, like some kind of system like Lightspeed or? 
I was thinking of Kajabi. I'm, I'm still researching it. So if you have any uh, ideas, or whatever, I'll take care of you on that. I'll take care awesome. of you on that. Cause I'm doing, yeah. I got a sim, it's not the same as what you're doing, but uh, we'll, we'll talk offline with that. I'll get you hooked Perfect. up with somebody that'll take good care of you on that. Um, so Appreciate that's what you're, what you're doing. And are you planning on going speaking when things open up again, actually going? Absolutely. To- Absolutely. Well? I'm in a process right now. Like I told you at the beginning, um, I have a really good friend in LA. I'm in Arizona. Um, he, he's, he's, he's a shaker and baker. He, he makes things happen. And, uh, he texted me the other day, asked if I wanted to do a documentary on my life. So, uh, I've been praying for that for a while to do a That's documentary sick, because man. I'm finally ready. Like, it's like a Cinderella, like it's a crazy story, you know, with my wife and, and everything I went through and like, and you won't get too many athletes that are hundred percent transparent and vulnerable at that space. Yep. So my vision of that is to be able to move people and be able to inspire people to take action and provide them opportunities with what I do, if that resonates with me, uh, to be able to take action through courses or whatever with that. So yeah, do, I, I want to do a documentary. We're kind of shooting that in the next six months and then and rolling out this system and then still, still rocking and building real estate. Man. Dude. I, yeah. I vibe with you, dude. We're going to, we're going to do some shit together. Cause I, I, I want to help you with your mission best I can. And I have the energy and passion to do that. Um, and then of course, like, well, you know, who knows what comes from that, but you got, you got my, uh, my support any way possible. Uh, we'll talk more offline. Do you happen to know John Mabry by any chance? I don't know him personally, but I do know him. Yeah. Yeah. He went to my high school. He's the only guy out of our uh, tiny little tiny high school in Maryland that went to majors. He went to Westchester and the, uh, played for the Cardinals most of his career behind uh, yeah. McGuire when M- M- Mark McGuire was there. So, yeah. Uh, so I came like right after McGuire, like at the tail end of his career. I think I play with him. Yeah, just barely. So yeah. yeah, gotcha. Gotcha. All right, cool. Well, look, final question before I get to the final question, how can my audience connect with you? What's the best way like social media or what? Just on socials. Uh, IG is Shay underscore Hillenbrand and then Facebook Shay Hillenbrand and then uh, LinkedIn Shay Hillenbrand. So that's where it's at right now. We're building everything else out with the website and other avenues to be able to support people. So I finally got book? my clarity. Uh, that's coming too. You're so. going to write a book? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Multiple right. books. So yeah, let's go, uh, man. I kept telling my wife, I want to, she's like, you're not ready yet. You got to be in this spot. Yeah. Cause I'm just like, I just want to like you, I, I want to go full bore, but I want to make uh, sure it's done right. And, and done with an impact, you know, well, like I did, it's just tough, dude. Cause I, people don't realize I've lived both my childhood dreams. Like I drove around, like, what's the purpose of life? I did it. And I couldn't find it. Like it's just cause I, I was lost. And and I found what I searched for for my whole life is that inner identity is understanding that and, and finding your purpose and, and, and aligning yourself with that. So there's really nothing this world can offer me, man. If I, if I, if I leave tonight, I'm cool. So it's just like, that's what I'm battling right now. So um, it's cool. Yeah. Whatever happens, I want to full bore ahead and uh, yeah, just do yeah. whatever I can. Well, I, I interviewed Brian Smith who founded Uggs Boots the other yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The older guy now. And he said, he said, C-Rock. You cannot give birth to an adult because I want to go a million miles a minute. Like I'm ready to do it. I'm ready to go speak on any stage that's out there. I'm ready, whatever. I got my book coming. I mean, like, I just want it. Same thing. And he's like, dude, he's like, patience is good when it comes to doing something like this. Let your baby grow. So uh, yeah, just a little bit of advice there. You can't birth an adult. Can we put it on some steroids or something, man? Let's go. What the hell, man? So anyway, anyway, that's true. Uh, that's true. You got to stay the course and let it, let it, let it, uh, you know, just the process, grow. right? Yeah. But so final question here, the rocket fuel concept I talk about all the time is taking anything that comes your way for your purpose that you're going, man, and things are coming and trying to slow you down and set you back, discouraging people, let downs, all the stuff. If you convert all this stuff into rocket fuel to blast you through there, you become unstoppable at what you want to do. And, and hopefully it's ethical because obviously we want to do the right things, right? What has that meant to you in your life and, and or what you're doing now to, to, to be able to t- just become unstoppable by converting everything into rocket fuel? I think that's, I love these questions, man, because people don't go there uh, with this type of stuff. Um, what it is, is like it comes down to your identity, man. When you discover who you are, like I said before, like it's just you have no freaking competition. I, I don't care. Throw anything at me. My challenge with my wife is like, man, you're so cocky. This and I'm like, I'm not cocky, man. I'm, I'm, I'm so flipping humble, but I'm so focused in my lane, which high performers do to where it's like, whatever you guys do, you, you could have that. I'm staying here. Mm-hmm. I am yeah. super sensitive to everything that's going on. Don't get me wrong, man. I have a heart of, of servant's heart, dude. I would die for people, but COVID not distracting me. Elections not distracting me. Black Lives Matter, not distracting me. Like I said, I'm sensitive, but I'm staying here and I'm doing what I can because I know if I do what I could do and use all this stuff, like you said, as rocket fuel, the distractions and the, the, the 
all these things are trying to impede on you. I know I can get to a place where I can truly make an impact, not just sit on social media and, and make a statement or whatever about what my, no, I want to be able to, okay, I want to, to create a movement. I want to do a school. I want to buy my farm back, man. Like two weeks ago, I'm like, what? You want to buy your farm back? Yeah, I want to. That's the ultimate comeback. I want to get my farm back and I'm going to do it the way the, the, the vision I had before. But I have a sound mind. I have the team now and I can make that impact rather than just talking it. I want to be able to be in a position, whether it's 50 million or 100 million or aligning with people that are billionaire, whatever that is, to go out there and take that action to really make that impact rather than sitting here and allow myself just to go along with the flow. Love it. Love it. Let's go. I'm ready to run through this. <laughs> Let's go. We're going to run through this brick wall right here. Right. <laughs> hey, Shay, thank you so much, man. Appreciate you being on here. I look forward to developing the relationship with you, man, and supporting anything that you're looking to do. And uh, you guys have been listening to the What You Made Of podcast with your boy, C-Rock and Shay Hillenbrand. Come back next time, guys. Go get the Rocket Fuel book. Until then, become unstoppable. 